This is David Taub with GV Wire. It's election season again in Clovis. The election for the city council taking place, and one of those who are running is Paul Soros. Paul, tell us a little about your background. Uh, how long have you lived in Clovis? What do you do for a uh, living? Yeah, so I've lived in Clovis for 13 years, and I live there with my wife. I have two small children uh, in the school district as well. Uh, professionally, what I do is I'm the CEO for Camarena Health. We are a community health center based in the city of Madeira, and we service Madeira County residents with primary care uh, health care services. Is that sort of like a clinic? It is, correct. All right, so what motivated you to run for Clovis Council? So my motivation really is through my work, I get a lot of opportunity to provide public service to a lot of the residents in the communities where I work. And I'd really like the opportunity to do the same in the community where I live. I have a young family growing up in Clovis, and we really value uh, the quality of life that we have in the city of Clovis. It's a great rate place to raise a family. Uh, it's a great, safe place to live. And with a few seats open on the city council, this was a great opportunity where I felt I could um, help the community maintain these really core values that make the city of Clovis a fantastic place to be. Public safety. Yes, yeah, so I was going to ask you, you know, what, do you, what, what is the, yeah, we always hear the phrase, the Clovis way of life. What do you consider the Clovis way of life? I consider it a great, safe place to live where you can raise a family, you can work, you can shop, you can really enjoy the community that you live in um, and feel safe doing that and knowing that you have a, a city and a city council and city leadership that are going to work on your behalf to uh, really make sure that you have that way of life moving forward. And so I think that the fiscal integrity and the public safety that our city council has created for the community is tremendous. And I'd really like the opportunity to help them move that forward. We have a couple of new uh, open seats on the council. And so I think it's important that new council members be elected um, that value uh, those core values that make the city great and that have the vision and the foresight to be able to continue that into the future, uh, not only for the folks that live there today, but 10, 15, 20 years from now. Now, have you ever served public office for a run for public office or served in any committees of any sort? Yeah, so I haven't held public office. Um, from a governance standpoint, I've served on several uh, boards of directors, both locally and statewide organizations. Um, from a commission standpoint, I serve on the Fresno Kings Madera Regional Health Authority as an appointed commissioner there, uh, which helps oversee the managed care Medi-Cal program here for these three counties. Now, why does Clovis have the reputation of not, you know, not having the problems that Fresno has when it comes to crime, when it comes to ease of doing business? What, what do you think Clovis does differently, and what do you want to continue or, or change about that that differentiates itself from Fresno? So I think that from a crime standpoint, I think that our police department does an excellent job of really focusing on the small things. And that kind of goes back to many people have heard the broken windows theory, where if you, if you look past the small things, they continue to grow and they develop into larger issues. And I think that the city of Clovis really does a lot of proactive uh, measures in addressing the small things. And by doing so, I think that's infectious. And I think that the residents in Clovis also look out for the small things and report those to uh, public safety and law enforcement, knowing that they'll be addressed. And I think that having a mindset, not only from our public safety, but also from the residents, really helps create that community sense of not tolerating um, some of these negative behaviors or crimes. Um, and that's just, it's been that way for a long time. And I think that as we continue to put an emphasis and really support that attention to detail and in the small things, that Clovis will continue to be a very safe place to live. Now, is there a, what would be a new initiative that you propose or something you want to change about the way Clovis handles its business? So I'll be perfectly honest and say that I don't know that I personally really don't have any new initiatives or things I'd like to change. I think that the city of Clovis has been very well managed. I think that our city council and city leadership have done a great job of positioning the community uh, to be successful. Um, my true vision for what I like to do is be, be able to step into the role, work collaboratively with the existing council and city leadership to be able to maintain what the city has done. Um, and as it continues to grow, 
be able to maintain that through growth, which sometimes can be a challenge as you grow geographically and more residents. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. That was going to be our next question for you. I mean, what are your thoughts on growth? I mean, we see how the businesses expanding and, and starting up in Clovis. More businesses mean more people. And of course, when you have more people, that brings up affordable housing issues. So how do you suggest Clovis handles it? I think that as it's handled, you know, historically, as we continue to grow, I, the pro business is great. The growth is fantastic. Um, as a resident myself, I really enjoy the opportunities and I welcome the opportunities to stay local and shop and do things with my family and not have to leave the city of Clovis for some of those um, services um, or entertainment that we have historically. So I think the growth is great. It helps from a revenue standpoint for the city. It helps increase the quality of life of being able to do things in a community where we feel safe and where we live and where we like to be. And so as the city continues to grow, I think it's important that those services also grow um, so that residents as they come in and they move to the city have those opportunities close to home where they want to be. Right, and finally, uh, it is the rare occasion in the city of Clovis where there are two open seats on the city council. Now, one of those was for a four-year term where uh, I believe only one person's running. And, uh, so there's well, actually two four-year seats. Oh, I mean one, one, one open seat. I know Lynn Ashbeck's running for, 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 right. for run seat. And then there's mm -hmm. another open seat where only one other person is running. Yet for the two-year seat, you have three people running. So why did you pick the two-year seat as opposed to try for the uh, full term? So I, uh, I chose the two-year seat. Um, I thought it would be a good entry into the city council. Um, I'm a, as a relatively, I guess you'd call me an outsider or, you know, uh, individual who hasn't held public office before. Um, and I haven't, you know, held a public office uh, in the city of Clovis. Um, I felt that the two-year seat would be a better avenue to get in and introduce myself to the community. Uh, from a name recognition and really messaging standpoint of getting out. As I know, obviously Lynn Ashbeck has uh, served very well in the city council for for quite a while, and the other individual as well has uh, been in the city of Clovis um, on a commission as well. And so I thought the two-year seat would be a good uh, avenue to come in and, and to kind of introduce myself to the community and run for that two-year seat. All right, make sure you vote. Coming up in March for GV Wire, this is David Taub.